Hello and welcome to the Applied Economics course for Ocean Ain Shamskin program. This is Dr. Wale Talat, lecturer of Economics 8, Faculty of Business, Ain Shams University. Well, now we are going to continue what we already started in the first lecture about the economic growth economic development and trade strategies. Trade strategies. Revisiting again the topics we have to cover. We already covered the applied economics definitions and concepts in the last lecture, lecture number one. And we covered one of the trade strategies, the export-led development strategy. What we are going to cover in this lecture, the other two trade strategies, the import substitution and the outward looking strategy. And then we are going finally to move to the trade and growth. So we will cover all these topics for the economic growth, economic development and trade strategy in this lecture. We already discussed the first trade strategy, the export or the primary export led trade strategy. This is the second trade strategy, import substitution development strategy. So we sometimes name this trade strategy with different names, like the import substitution, as we see, inward looking policy, trade protectionism, or trade pessimists. These policies or this strategy seek to plot the policies in order to promote the rapid industrialization and therefore development by erecting high barriers to foreign goods in order to encourage the local production. So ideally, this trade strategy or this approach to development applies the infant industries, arguments for protection to one or more targeted industries in the developing countries. That is, the government determines those sectors best suited for local industrialization, raises barriers to trade on the product produced in those sectors so as to encourage the local investment, and then lowering the barriers over time as the industrialization process takes hold if the government has the, the targeted or has targeted the correct sectors and the right sectors, the industries in these sectors will continue to thrive even as protection comes down. So the import substitution trade strategy are these policies that are designed to promote the rapid industrialization and development by erecting those high barriers to foreign goods in order to encourage the local production. So now we do understand that the import substitution trade strategy, erecting or building or making high barriers to the foreign goods which mean that I'm decreasing the import of a certain sector, certain industrial sector, in order to increase my own local production of this sector. So considering these policies or application of these policies in order to achieve the objectives of the import substitution trade strategy, there is advantages and there are disadvantages for 
this policy or this strategy. So now what we are going to illustrate in the next few slides, the advantages of applying import substitution trade strategy and the disadvantages of applying this strategy or the argument against the application of this strategy. Well, now we have to look at the advantages of import substitution trade strategy. The first advantage is protection of infant and strategic industries and employment. Protection of the infant industry means that in new industry which experiences relative difficulty or is absolutely incapable in competing with the established competitors abroad. So, the main rationale behind protecting those infant industries is that these industries require their protection because they lack the economies of scale. The advantages arises due to the inverse relationship between the per unit fixed cost and the quantity produced. So, in applying this trade strategy, import substitution trade strategy, I am using the policy and instrument here, the tariffs, increasing tariffs and decreasing the quota. So, tariffs provide temporary protection for high cost domestic producers until they gain the necessary experiences and subsequently achieving economies of scale, which means lowering the unit costs and therefore lowering their prices. So this is the advantage of protecting the infant industry. Protection of the strategic industries, reducing reliance on other countries in extremely important and critical sectors. For example, the energy sector, water, steel, armament, and food. Or economically strategic industries, which means the large industries that employ large number of employees and have a strong linkage to other industries. So a particular product or industry might be a strategic importance to a country such as agriculture or coal and protectionism may be justified on the ground that it is keeping alive an industry which plays a vital part in the economy perhaps because of social, political or military reasons. So reducing the exposure to the international competition and encouraging the local industries, this will create more jobs since the local production will increase and new industries will open. This means that high employment rates. So applying this trade strategy will protect the infant strategic industries and also protect the employment by creating new jobs. So now we understood the first advantage, protection of infant industries, protection of the strategic industries and the creation of employment or employment creation. Second is saving foreign currency and reducing balance of payment deficit. As the import substitution approach substitute or the import substitution strategy substitute externally produced goods and services, these import, imports, especially the basic necessities as we refer to the energy, food and water, with locally produced one. By doing so, the local industries can put their money to work within their boundaries 
and that mean I am saving the my foreign currency and saving in foreign currency reducing the pressure on the foreign reserve and henceforth I am reducing the imports so I am reducing the balance of payment deficit. Thirdly, self-reliance. So under this trade strategy, I'm protecting the infant and the strategic industries, which means that I'm less dependent on other countries. So I will grant this self-reliance. Lastly, the tariff. Tariff represent an important source of the government revenue. So applying this trade strategy, whoever is going to import from abroad will have to pay these tariffs and it will consider as a government revenue. So these are the most important advantages of the import substitution development strategy. Now we have to move to talk about the arguments against or the disadvantages of applying this trade strategy. Arguments against the import substitution or the disadvantage in applying the import substitution trade strategy. In practice, the barriers rarely come down. So the first disadvantage is the high barriers that this strategy is using rarely come down. Corporate manager who convinced politicians that protection should be imposed in the first place recognize the strong link between the profits that these local industries are achieving and the protectionism. Any change in the market that would cause profits to fall lead this manager back to the government for additional protection. In the end, countries that follow import substitution trade strategies tend to be characterized by high barriers to trade that grow over time. Second, import substitution policies have other problems. First, they tend to limit the development of industries that supply inputs to the protected industries. That is, it is often the case that industries targeted for initial protection are producers of consumer goods. So managers in these industries would be very much opposed to any government policies that increased the cost of their inputs. Thus, they would tend to oppose protection for these other industries or demand still more protection for their products. So this strategy limits the development of industries that supply inputs to the protected industries permanent protection. This leads to monopoly and no incentive for efficiency improvement. So the local industries will seek always to have protection from the government. So it will be turned to, as we see here, a permanent protection and they will always try to achieve a bigger market share in the country which leads to monopoly and they will not have the incentive to improve their quality and decrease their price so there will be no incentive for efficiency improvement thirdly Because countries that pursue the import substitution trade strategies tend not to apply high tariffs to capital goods, imported capital goods are used extensively in local production. 
coupled with other local industries and local policies, the manager utilizes relatively capital-intensive production techniques. This means that employment in the newly industrialized sector doesn't grow as fast as might otherwise be the case. So the imported goods are used extensively, imported capital goods are used extensively in the local production. Moreover, the whole development strategy depends upon the choices made by the government officials. Considerable resources are devoted to convincing officials of the merits of various cases. Alternatively, officials are bribed. In either events, the resources used in these activities could have been devoted to productive enterprises and hence represent additional economic waste over and above the usual cost of production. So here, the strategy encourages citizens to spend scare resources to lobby or bribe government officials to protect their industries. So therefore, this strategy could achieve economic inefficiency or leads to economic inefficiency, which means that lower growth rate and lower employment or higher unemployment. So there is a monopoly, no competition, less quality, low quality and high prices, which means economic inefficiency. And also not on the econometrical or the economic factor it will affect, but also on the social dimension, it may lead to social disadvantages as I'm restricting the import. So no variety of goods which means I'm limiting the consumer choices and this would lead to lowering the quality of life for the average citizen or lower the standard of living of the average citizen. So these are the most disadvantages when I'm applying the import substitution trade strategy. Well, now we do understand the trade strategy, the first trade strategy, which is the primary export-led trade strategy. And we know the advantage of applying this strategy and the disadvantage of applying the primary export-led trade strategy. And then we moved to the import substitution trade strategy. We illustrated the advantage of applying this strategy and also we mentioned and illustrated the disadvantages of this strategy. Well, now we move to the third trade strategy. Instead of import substitution strategy, some developing countries have adopted outward looking development strategies. So, these policies involve government targeting of sectors in which the country has potential comparative advantage. Thus, if a country is well endowed with low skilled labor, the government would encourage the development of labor intensive industries in the hope of promoting exports of these products. This type of strategy includes government policies, such as keeping relatively open market so that the internal prices reflect world prices, maintaining an undervalued exchange rate so that export prices remain competitive in world market and imposing only minimal government interference on factor market. So the wages and the rent reflect true scarcity. In addition, successful exporters often enjoy additional benefits 
including special preferences for the use of the port facilities, communication networks, and lowering loan and tax rates. Only a few countries have followed outward-oriented development strategies for extensive period of time, but those that have done so have been very successful. They include China since the mid of 1980s, Japan in its post-World War II reconstruction, and the newly industrialized countries of Asia, such as Hong Kong, South Korea, Singapore, and Taiwan, in part because of their success and because of the high economic cost of import substitution policies, many other countries have recently began to adopt more outward-oriented policies. So now I'm going to cover the topic trade and growth. We already covered the trade strategies and plotting the three trade strategies, how they are connected to the economic development and what are the advantage and disadvantages of them. Well, now we will talk about trade and growth. Economic growth can be represented as an outward shift of the country's production possibility frontier, the BPF. We already talked about the economic growth in lecture number one, but we have now to link the economic growth with trade. So, since growth affects both the production and the consumption, then it also affects international trade. So, international trade has a strong linkage with the growth or economic growth. It affects on the PPF. Neutral economic growth. Neutral economic growth is a situation where a proportionate increase in all resources and consumption so that the trade also expand proportionately to the growth of the economy. So, after the growth, the economy continues to produce and consume in the same ratios as before growth. We have other two types other than the neutral growth. We have other two types of growth. The pro-trade biased growth and anti-trade biased growth. Pro-trade biased growth. When growth or economic growth occurs as a result of an increase in the resources, which is used intensively in the production of export goods, then the output of export goods will rise relative to import production. And here is the export goods will rise relative to import production, which is a good indicator. So the inter and the international trade will expand by more than the rate of the growth of the GDP. And this is called pro-trade biased growth. However, if we look at the anti-trade biased growth, when growth occurs, the economic growth occurs as a result of an increase in the resource used intensively in the production of import goods. Then, the output of import goods will rise relative to the output of export goods. And therefore, the international trade of this country will fall. 
and this is called anti-trade biased growth where the output of the import goods the goods that i'm importing will rise relatively to the output of the export goods so now we covered the neutral growth pro-trade biased growth and anti-trade biased growth so now we have to ask ourselves what are the different factors that can affect the economic growth well first is the technological change technological or technical change occurs when the same amount of the output can be produced with fewer factor inputs or when the same amount of the inputs that i'm using can produce greater amount of the output this is called technological change and this is affecting the economic growth what are the types of technological change neutral technological change which is an innovation that reduces by an equiproportionate amount the quantity of factors required to produce a given level of output labor saving or capital saving technological change this is the second type it is an innovation that leads to a reduction in the use of the labor if i'm saying the labor saving technological change if i'm talking about capital saving technological change then it is an innovation that leads to the reduction in the use of capital relative to other factors in the production of a given level of output so we have two types of technological change either it's the neutral technological change or the labor saving or capital saving technological change okay great now we are done with the first topic the trade strategies economic development and economic growth we already covered these topics in the first lecture and in the second lecture please if you have any question don't hesitate to ask me please let me know i hope you enjoyed this lecture this week thanks for listening and take care see you in the third lecture